Alright, hello, Volen, welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Mark 33 mod, which is being made by form user Angel125. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your own X-33 inspired spacecraft here in game. And these things are pretty awesome so let's uh, jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get now thankfully there are no prerequisites for this to work uh, but there are two highly recommended mods which are kerbal constructs and dock rotate and that's because with those installed you actually do get a custom launch pad for this mod as well we're not going to be looking at that though because i really just want to focus on the x33 parts so i don't have those installed now just with the base vanilla game we get all the space plane parts here starting with the Mark 33 cockpit, which is a massive thing, which has a crew of minimum of two to operate, but a max capacity of 12 Kerbals. It is also, of course, a lifting surface with a swing area of four, has a fuel tank holding 7,785 liquid fuel, as well as an oxidizer tank holding 9,515, as well as a science experiment of the typical crew report. Now, there is also the Mark 33 Probe Core, which is sort of the main nose of the uh, space plane here. And this one is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, built-in RCS thrusters, a resource converter taking liquid fuel and oxidizer and converting it into electric charge, and finally a battery holding a whopping 2,000 electric charge to keep the whole thing going. And it's also a robotic controller to boot, which is pretty nice. Now moving into the fuel tanks category, we have the Mark 33 aft tank, which is, of course, like with many of the parts in this, a lifting surface with a relative wing area of nine. It does also have some built-in RCS thrusters, as well as a fuel tank holding 7,785 liquid fuel and an oxidizer tank holding 9,515. Very similar to the cockpit that we had earlier, probably a copy-paste thing. Now then we also have the Mark 33 forward tank, which you can actually use this instead of the cockpit if you just want to go with a pure probe core ship. And now this forward tank is also a lifting surface with a relative wing area of four and has a liquid fuel tank of 7,785 once more and an oxidizer tank of 9,515. Now then, finally, we have the Mark 33 mid tank, and oh, this is a big one here, and has a relative wing area of 17, you know, with that much larger size for its lifting surface, and has much larger fuel tanks holding liquid fuel at a rate of 18,495 and 22,605 oxidizer, which is amazing. Now, down to the engines category, we only have one thing, and that is the KR-2200L Velociraptor Linear Air Spike, which is an amazingly powerful engine here with two different modes. Either a low fuel consumption mode for your more economical flying, producing 600 kilonewtons of thrust, or the high powered mode, just chewing through fuel, using up, or rather producing, 2,200 kilonewtons of thrust. Now it also does have a built-in alternator producing 12 electric charge per second, has an ISP depending on the fuel or the fuel mode between 340 and 360, and also some gimbling, which is pretty sweet. Now down in command and control, we've only got one object here, and that is the Vernier 5-way RCS thruster, a pretty simple little just RCS block with a thrust power of 12 using liquid fuel and oxidizer for you to enjoy. Now down in structural, we got a fair few pieces here, and they are some fun ones. Now the first things we're going to look at is four parts, as you can see, these being the Mark 33 Aero Cone, the Mark 33 Engine Coupler, 
the Mark 33 Quad Coupler, and finally the Mark 33 Twin Coupler. Now, all of these different bits and bobs go on the Mark 33 Aft Tank, and you can use them as either, you know, a nice aero cone for a nice sleek look, or the engine couplers and adapters here so that you can attach more traditional Kerbal engines to it, which is nice you have those sorts of options. Now the next part we have is another big one, and that's the Mark 33 launch platform. Now this is one of the bits that goes along with the custom launch pad outside, but you can use this with the normal launch pad, and it is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, a generator producing 7.5 electric charge per second, and a battery holding a thousand electric charge. Now you can slap on top of that thing the Mark 33 Strongback, which is what you actually attach the full Mark 33 to, and it is a decoupler with 200 ejection force. But that's not all we have for the launch pad. We also have the crew tower base, the crew tower midsection, and the crew tower cockpit section, which all go on top of the launch platform and actually have functioning elevators for you to get your Kerbals up and down from your ship, which is pretty cool. But how are they gonna get off of the launch platform? Well, that's where we have the Mark 33 platform elevator, which slaps onto the side of the launch platform to give you an elevator to take you down to the ground level. Very handy. Now, next in the coupling category, we have the Mark 33 shielded docking port, which goes straight on the nose of this entire thing and is a docking node. Very nice and convenient there. Now, in the payload category, we have some very cool parts that go along with the mid-tank, their module bits and bobs, the first one being the Mark 33 fuel module. If you need even more fuel, this will hold 1,017 liquid fuel, or, one, or as well as 1,243 oxidizer. We then have a Mark 33 cargo module, which works with the standard in-game inventory system and has 12 slots. We then also have the uh, Mark 33 crew module, which will hold up to 16 Kerbals in it. It also does have its own independent docking node, as well as, of course, the usual science experiment of a crew report. And finally, in this category, we have uh, the uh, Mark 33 payload bay module, which is a nice cargo bay. You can put a couple of in there. They all open up, so you can really say a satellite or something like that. Uh, very cool. Now, then in the aerodynamics category, we've got a couple of nice flaps and elevons here, those being the Mark 33 body flap, the inner elevon, and the outer elevon, all of course functioning as control surfaces. We then have two wing slash wing like things with the Mark 33 tail fin, which is a control surface, and the Mark 33 wing, which is just a lifting surface, and those inner and outer elevons slide around right on in to that. Now next in the ground category, we have two types of landing gear. The main landing gear, which go in the rear of the ship, and the nose landing gear, of course, going up by the nose. Some very nice looking things there with the good steering range of 30 degrees and, you know, requiring some electric charge there as well of 2 EC per second. And then the final part we have is down in utility and that is the Mark 33 external airlock which can hold two Kerbals inside. And despite being an airlock, it really doesn't function as a uh, docking node or anything like that. It is purely an additional place for crew. And that is all the parts. We have a lot here. That's why I didn't do my normal thing of grabbing each one individually and popping them in because, well, there are a lot of things. But let's actually start putting together this ship just to see them all in action. So, of course, we want to start with the Mark 33 probe core here. Lovely part. The main sort of front nose there. And if we want, we can already go ahead and put on that uh, shield and shielded docking port right on the front so that we do have that right there on the nose. And then after the probe core, we can either put that Mark 33 cockpit, which I personally like adding because 
loads of freaking crew members for your vessel. But if you are just wanting to go the uh, probe route, you can just slap on that forward tank for a nice sleek look and a lot of extra fuel. And after that, you are going to want the mid tank there, and that has all that nice room in the middle for those different modular payload bits. So you can pop in there, say, a fuel. Let's pop in a cargo module, too, because why not? A crew module. There that goes with, if we extend that, a nice little docking port just popping right out from the top. And finally, we have the payload module with a lot of nice room in there and does have the cargo doors that can open up. And you can ma mix and match these however you like, just having the whole central core being docking ports or cargo modules, whichever you do desire. That's always the nice part about a modular system. You can make it do whatever you want, and that's wonderful. Now then, finally, to sort of finish up the main fuselage of this thing, we got to throw on that uh, aft tank there, which, of course, does have all that nice additional RCS and a load of spots here to put all the different engines. Or, if you know you don't want to put in the amazing Velociraptor engine, which I don't see why you wouldn't, because look at it, it's magnificent, you can, of course, put on the different couplers in there to then use the more sort of standard in-game engines. But what's really fun about this uh, Aerospike engine in particular is that um, if we actually pop it on that attachment point there, it actually has an alternate mode to it, so you can either use it with this or a standard rocket. You can actually have this thing with a built-in adapter shroud to fit in with your normal circular rockets in-game, making it even more useful. And that is just beautiful. Now, another thing I want to go over real quick is on the Mark 33 Arrow Cone, if we pop uh, that in here. This one has two different sort of uh, variants as well. This sort of defaulted half variant, and then there's also a full variant. So it takes up the same width as, say, the uh, engine coupler over here or the KR-2200L Velociraptor. All very nice. Now, as for the other bits and bobs, I mean, you know, you got the nice tail fin there. You're going to want to shove on. You're going to want to put the wing right in there. The elevons in there. Some pretty standard things for the rest of the parts, but all very good. And if we do just quickly go back and turn on, say, some squad parts, just to get an idea of the size of this thing. Well, I mean... Let's actually pop off of that there. Wonderful. And we'll pop that on the front. Yeah, that's the size of this whole thing. There we have our Mark III cockpit, and it's just dwarfed by the rest of this X-33. It is magnificent. You gotta love it. It just has so much to it. And with all the really cool launch pad parts in here, you just got a lot of options to either launch this from the space plane hangar. I mean, it has the landing gear. You could take this thing off like a normal plane. Or, you know, launch it from the launch pad. Or if you do have Kerbal Constructs installed, that custom launch pad that you could place anywhere in the world that you do desire. Let's actually go out here where I have a pre-built Mark 33 waiting. Now, even though it's on the runway, I actually built it with the full launch pad setup so you guys could see this and just look at it in all of its glory. It is great. If we actually aim the camera down here like the elevator, I absolutely love that each of these bits has a functioning elevator. Look at it go. It will slowly and surely take your Kerbals up and down from the ground, which is great. And if we aim our camera over here, we have the same in this main tower section. We can raise that elevator right there. You can see it going up. And you can take it all the way up to the top of this thing, if we aim our camera here, where we do have a walkway that can take you all the way to the ship. Now, when I actually built this, I put them in slightly the wrong order, so I'm a little bit low from the crew hatch. That's on me. That's on me. 
But, you know, you once you're ready for uh, your flight, you can retract uh, the boarding arm there and go to launch. It's a beautifully made system. You can bring your Kerbals via a truck over from somewhere else in the Kerbal Space Center, get them on the elevator, take them all the way up, and so long as you don't do the mistake I made of putting them in the wrong order, you can actually see where I went wrong right there because the, uh, the struts here, if I actually aim my camera there, the struts do not align. <laughs> like I said, that one's on me. But yeah, you can drive them up here and then take them up the elevators and walk them down the ramp all the way into your ship. It's just so cool. I really, really do enjoy that. And then we do have lovely interiors for all of the Kerbals. We've got a great looking cockpit in here where we've got, you know, just four Kerbals in the cockpit. Now this thing holds a lot of crew, 16 in total. Oh wait, no, 16 is the crew module. This one I'm, I think is 12? Well yeah, it's in two different sections. We have the sort of forward cockpit area. And then, oh my god, look at all those switches. Hadn't really paid attention to that before. Could you imagine having to learn that in real life? Ugh, boy. And then we have sort of the rear section of the whole cockpit here, where we have additional seating for Kerbals. And if we keep on tabbing back between the different floors, as you can see, we've got the ladder going up and down there, we'll eventually make it back to the crew module. Ah, wait, is this? Ah, yes, I believe this is back in the crew module. We've got some nice screens here showing everything, and a lot of seats for your Kerbals. And we just gotta keep on going and going, just with loads of seats everywhere. Again, we got a lot of Kerbals. I think this one's holding over 30 Kerbals at the moment, between all the different crew compartments I've got in here. It's glorious. And if we do turn on the interior layout, you know, some mods don't take advantage of that, but this one definitely did, so we can see our Kerbals through the windows there. Always nice. But let's actually uh, throttle this baby up and start a launch. Now, these engines are super powerful, and I decided to line the entirety of the back of mine with all Velociraptors, and I'm also now realizing I forgot to put Elevons on this thing. Eh, I'm sure we'll be fine. The gimbling on this should keep it safe. So let's just have it at like roughly half throttle. Actually, you know what, what the heck. Let's put it all the way up to full throttle and launch in three, two, one, lift off. Listen to that magnificent rumble. It is glorious. And the particle effects are just beautiful on this thing. It is a very sleek, great, well-made ship. And with the four Velociraptor engines, this thing gets into orbit in no time. It is super quick, super powerful, which really shouldn't be surprising considering just, I mean, how crazy powerful those engines are currently on the uh, high mode for them. I really haven't been using them on the low mode because why would you when you have so much power? Because I mean, that's just, that's just fun. But yeah, that is the Mark 33 mod, giving you all the parts to build your own X-33 inspired spacecraft. And it is just great. I love all the little bits in this thing. The crew hatch with the extendable docking port, I love. The uh, payload bits back here are awesome. And the modularity, it is just a great little set of parts. So if you'd like to take a look at this for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this one today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.